Welcome back, everybody. It has been a long time since I recorded a video. Just kidding. I just hit the stop record button on the first one. <laughs> it's been about 30 seconds. Anyway, let's get into Joan 2, the Maid of Orléans. March 26th, Chinon. It is one thing for a band of dispirited soldiers to put their trust in a teenage girl. It is entirely another for that girl to be given command of the army of an entire nation. We were filled with pride when we heard the Dauphin's heralds pronounce Joan the Maid as commander of the army of France. So that she may look like a general, the Dauphin presented Joan with a great war horse and a suit of white armor. Joan instructed me to look for an ancient sword buried beneath the altar of the local church. I was skeptical. But not only did the man unearth a rusted blade, but we found that the sword had belonged to Charlemagne, grandfather of France. This is of historical dubiousness. I not doubt her word again. Still visible on the hilt was the fleur de lis. Joan adopted the fleur de lis as her symbol and had it blazoned upon her battle standard. Wherever Joan goes, the standard goes also goes with us to Orléans. The city of Orléans is one of the finest in France, but it is under siege by our enemies, England and Burgundy. It's about to fall. This war has dragged on for 100 years, with precious few French victories. The people of Orléans need a savior. They will receive Joan of Arc. Oof. Oh, the cheery French music. To be honest, though, I think the Bulgarian music might be the most cheery of all. Anyway, Joan must survive. The cathedral in Orléans must remain standing and escort uh, Joan to Blois, Blois, so that sh she may command the French army. Uh, Castle Age, Poplin of 125, hurrier to Orléans before the English can cause much damage. This is a... It, Orléans is under Gaia's control. You're fine. Once the supplies arrive in Orléans, you'll be able to build up your forces. So, yeah, knights. Knights and rams are going to be uh, the theme of this campaign. Use the market. Sounds fine. Uh, English castles have large garrisons. Yes, they do. And there is a bunch of farms to the west, so definitely take advantage of those. Joan and her escort is leaving for Orléans. Joan and her escort are leaving for Orléans. There are two of them. Two, well, two groups. Two singular nouns, which together create plural, and therefore are instead of is. Face palm. Reinforcements and supplies are waiting for her head for her in Blois. Finally, uh, the army must reach the city of Orléans, cross the river, and relieve the French. Relieve the English siege of the city. Can I talk? The English have divided their army surrounding Orléans uh, from both north and south. The North English army, um, they mostly have like longbowmen swordsmen, and mangonels, and the southern English have battering rams, monks, and uh, knights. And the Burgundians are to the east. I am the Duke de Lanson, my lady. I will gladly ride with you to Orléans. Sounds good. He's just a, a paladin with two more attack. The English are coming. Uh, Joan herself, 240 HP, so a bit more. Uh, but one less Pierce armor. And I guess a little bit more attack, but Joan's obviously going to need to survive in all the campaigns, except for when she dies off screen. Sorry for the spoilers there. Even though it's history that's 600 plus years old. Onward and upward to uh, Blois, which is, looking at the score, by far the strongest player in the game. This is obviously the most powerful actor in all the region. 
Just kidding. They have like 9,000, you know, 9999 wood. Uh, so they can just keep farming forever. <laughs> Uh, whichever Civ Gaia is, it's not Frank's. Wait, nope. Because you can see they don't have the Frank extra HP. Anywho, uh, because almost our entire army is from Gaia, they won't benefit from upgrades. So what we're going to do is send these guys to do what damage they can, especially to Burgundy and the South English. Oh yeah. You used to not get. Uh, you used to say you got careening, and I think it did research careening, but the ships themselves wouldn't have careening, so it was like completely pointless. But now you actually do have it. You can transport your entire army across the uh, river if you want. But uh, I'm just going to do Joan and the trade carts because these guys got a mission, and that mission is to raid the enemy. Yep. Anyway. Wait. Didn't I bring the... Where are the trade cards? Where the hell are you guys going? Ugh. Anyway, I don't really care what happens with these units, just so long as they do something useful. And we'll be getting a bunch of resources in just a moment. Yep, so not only do we have 50 more pop cap than we did in the old game. Well, I guess that's really the biggest change. I guess we get... Uh, these lumber camps are new, I remember that. Anywho, so, uh, yes, you need to destroy one of the English castles. There are four, two for each side of the river. So, when choosing which one to attack, it really doesn't matter. They're all, you know, it's not too difficult. We're going to go with the southern English. Uh, just because, well, we have these units here already, so we're going to raid them. Already soften them up a bit. I mean, you can click up the castellators right away, but I at least want to get a little bit of, uh, you know, villager food income. Anyway, Burgundy is right here across the river. Now, I believe they will reach Castle Age eventually. They used to not in... Uh, you know, AOC. Holy sheep, Batman! I mean, these guys are never going to be able to make it back to uh, Orléans, but... We'll lame them. We'll lame Burgundy. We'll lame the poor AI. Die. So yeah, Burgundy will just make some spearmen and some rams eventually, if you let them get to Castle Age. But we're not going to do that. The English won't attack you right away either. So you have a bit of time. Like I said, this is one of, if not the easiest, campaigns overall. You know, discounting William Wallace. Which, uh, I, I wouldn't say he counts. You can't even change the difficulty on it. Go for it! 
like I said, I'm throwing these units away, quote unquote, because they do not benefit from any upgrades. Well, I mean, the Duke de Lanson does, and I think maybe some of the knights, but crossbowmen don't. Most of the knights don't. Okay. Now that we've sort of organically hit 800 food, we'll click up. Oops, that is not targeting the right thing. Oh, hey, I don't remember them attacking this early, so that's unfortunate. LOL! Well, don't I just look the fool? That's not ideal. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's not ideal, that's for sure. Anyway, Burgundy is more or less destroyed. I guess they have one Light Cav left. Anyway, these guys can just go ahead and shoot at the tower forever. Go ahead and raid the South British a bit more. Get a town center out here. I suppose you can build a castle. Frank castles are cheaper, of course. But, uh, you know me. I'm a boomer. Where's their lumber camp? I forget. Go out with four knights, and that should be enough to clean everybody up. In case you're wondering who the Duke de Lanson is, uh, he's more or less the commander. Like Joan was the very much the, the figurehead of the army of France. But, you know, she's a peasant girl. She doesn't really know anything about military tactics. Now, as far as I'm aware, she was actually pretty, you know, active in, like, meetings and stuff like that. So, like, you know, she, she was a part of things, but it, it's not her area of expertise. Her, her area of expertise was inspiring people, not uh, the, the nitty-gritty how to take down English castles and stuff. Hey, stop being buttheads. Even their scouts getting in on it feels bad, man. Like, none of this damage is going to, you know, kill the South British, but it's annoying to them. I mean, if AI could be annoyed. But yeah, having the higher pop limit uh, is especially great for Franks. You know, since all these DE campaigns have higher pop limit. Uh, just because knights are expensive. And Franks like having big economy. A big economy. I, I guess I can't talk today. Alright, we'll get a TC up over there. That should help a little bit. 
Uh. Oh, now I don't have any wood. Unfortunately, the score is still broken, which is kind of annoying. But if the score were functioning, you would then see that we would have been doing a good amount of damage to the South British. Did not see that men at arm. I'm gonna kill him? I'm gonna kill him? Oops. Die, Mill. Oh, where's Joan? Should probably not let her, you know, run off and die. That would be the, uh, you know, something I would I would do though. It would be in character, I guess. That's for sure. Again, unfortunately, your towers don't benefit from any upgrades you get either. I mean, you can build more towers, but the ones you get to start with don't benefit from the upgrades. Anyway, we're just going to run the, the Duke back with us. Because he does benefit from upgrades. And even if he didn't, he's still a good unit. Oh, traffic jam on aisle 7. So yeah, just going to boom up until we get, you know, 60-some villagers. Like we do for all these 125 pop scenarios. This will help a ton with the farmers especially. So yeah, um, I've destroyed every single one of these castles as way of beating the scenario before. Just to try them all out. And it does give you a little bit of variance. Uh, I mean, more or less, you, it's the same thing destroying the either the North or Southern British. Like, choosing between these two castles doesn't really matter. Same with between these two. It does provide you a little bit of a different challenge, you know, destroying either like this one or this one. You, you guys get the idea. Not my dock. Anyway, now I have enough for a castle. Let's get it on this hill. Oh yeah, these sheep. And rip that sheep rotting away. I guess we can see uh, law now. Here, here it is. Just a little town. With a huge-ass score so that they can have these three farmers work forever. Oh yeah, we can also see Shinon, which does even less. Just this one monk hanging around. Although they do have a keep, which is illegal as French. Franks. In case you're wondering what the difference between French and Franks is, um, the Franks are a more general term for the Germanic people that settled in this vicinity in what is now modern day France as well as Germany. So, strictly speaking, Franks and Teutons would be the same Civ. With Franks, I guess, now just being the... 
more specifically the West Franks. <laughs> The ones that settled in France and became the French eventually. Whereas the Teutons would be the ones in the East and eventually became Germany. Although with in the case of Germany, it was also a bunch of other Germanic groups. Oh yeah, chivalry. Super good tech. It's literally two hun bonuses smashed together in one. Oh yeah. No. Yeah, with Franks you don't even need as many stables as other cavalry civs, just because of chivalry. Like, I've played plenty of 1v1 games as Franks where you can just hang on to three to four stables in Imperial Age. Anyway, now we're pretty much going to have all our upgrades. Let's start heading down south. And we'll have the resources for another castle to drop forward, just to be super, super sure. And we'll even have jo Joan join the party, because she's still a good unit. We just need to be, you know, careful. Anyway, technically, I guess this castle would be a bit harder, because it has the TC in it, so it's like another source of arrow fire, but... Doesn't matter. In case you really want to know, this uh, this castle also has the TC nearby. Of course, they research fortified walls just to be a little bit more annoying. Get some swork shops. If this were going to be a particularly long battle, I'd also build forward stables, but that shouldn't really be an issue. Guess what? British knights are worse than Frank knights. Wait! They have arrow slits? Oh no, no, it's just uh, yeoman, my bad. I forgot. Yeah, Yeoman is now a Castle Age tech. Gives towers plus two attack. Which is, I guess, arrow slits and Yeoman attack bonus are the same thing. At least for guard towers. Britons get uh, even better than fully upgraded keeps. Get... 8 plus 9 attack on those suckers. We will, of course, endeavor to use Taxmen as well at certain points in this campaign. We had, we did use them before a lot in Tour, if you remember that, all the way back to the historical battles. Back when I played the campaigns on stream... Looks like my battering ram is propping open the gate, which is pretty convenient. But yeah, they have masonry as well, and Yeoman makes these towers even scarier.
I'm pretty sure this is Burgundy's only unit at this point. Alright. I'm scared for Joan. She was taking a lot of arrow fire there. But this should be it. possible. Hooray! Anyway, um, here's the other southern English base. Well, I guess they destroyed it, but it was uh, a couple stables, castle, town center. And then here is the north English. Pretty similar thing. They just trained different units. Oh yeah, there used to be a little, oh, all the way over here, there used to be a little area that cut out and said GTS. I don't remember what GTS stood for, but it was just a little nod that Ensemble did back in the day, but they have removed it. Feels bad, man. Oh yeah, volume. Joan prophesied that she would be wounded. What? No one was Imperial Age for Arbalests. But as we carried Joan away from the carnage, the battle was won. Orleans was free. When we entered the city, the entire population cheered us on from windows, rooftops, and city streets. They fired artillery into the night sky and shouted aloud their nickname for Joan. La Pucelle! The Maid of Orleans. There we go! Score military kill death is still bugged. All these stats. You can see the Southern English were never really able to get much of an army going because we raided them so much. Anyway, that will be the Maid of Orléans, which doesn't have the accent here. The uh, accent aigu, as they say in French. I don't know why. It's there everywhere else. Anyway, next will be the cleansing of the Loire. See you guys then.